Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian from Whisper Status 74 and this is another video on Love, Death and Robots. And this is going to be a love letter video, um, not just a review video, but just a complete geeking out nerd fest on this series and on animation in general and where I believe and what I believe stands on this being more important than just an anthology. And I hope this series gets the recognition that it deserves. Because to me, this is the best way to tell a story. To me, this is the perfect marriage of books and games and media to tell a story that motion pictures just can never, ever grasp. Um, not, not even the Marvel Universe, which does an amazing job, can do what this type of animation can do. Our favorite comics, both American and manga and all over the world, I wish could be done this way. And we'll explain more about that in this video. This video is going to be long. It's in 1080p for that reason. It's not just about Love, Death, and Robots, which is phenomenal. And we're going to talk about that just in general, what animation has been able to do. And I feel like this Love, Death, and Robots has not only captured the animation and the storytelling of so many pieces in the past, but done it with modern animation and techniques and has captured the soul of hand-drawn animation that so many of us love and miss. Um, where CGI has been heartless and soulless in, in terms of new films and even animated films in the past, such as Ren 10, um, Christmas Carol with that motion capture, it's done so well in each one of these segments that I prefer it over even just random hand-drawn animation. It's just done so well in every single segment from the camera movement to its design to the storytelling that is done in 15 minutes has, in my opinion, beaten two-hour films. Um, the last two films I've seen, Captain Marvel and Battle Angel Alita, both fine. I left feeling that they were fine. Now, I very foolishly did a video on Sunny's Edge, the first episode of the series. I saw it. I was so taken back by it. I had to do a video on it before even seeing the rest of the episodes. And the only complaint I have about any of the anthology is that they end that the story they tell in those 15 minutes grabbed me more than any film I've seen in the last few years. Other than some shows like maybe Game of Thrones and probably the first year of Westworld, the first season of that, I just wanted more. I needed more. When this one ended, Sunny's Edge, the very first one, it broke my heart. Just to totally, I just needed more of it. I mean, needed more of it. The action scenes, the acting, the character design, the detail, the foreshadowing. Um, somebody catch up in the comments that had reported or had noticed that when she engages in this, they actually turn off her link to the creature. Um, whoever was in the comments, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but there's foreshadowing in it that you have to go back and watch again and again. And to say that I have to watch 15-minute clips more than once and then again is more than I have in any film in recent memory. Um, most films that I see recently, I literally see them, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, that was fine. These grab me. Every single one of them. Now, there are some better than others. Um, this is one of my favorites, being the very first one, but I did not feel let down as I continued watching episodes down the line. But what I want to talk about as well is... I've only gotten one comment in all the comments in the last video about forced feminism that so many of us have been feeling is happening in Hollywood. And this isn't a male versus female rant real quick, but the support for this and all of the different episodes really shows that those of us that have been fans of this type of animation from new to old have never cared about feminism in our comics, in our animated I've heard only one comment about feminism in all the comments in that video. We've all just cheered on these characters for years, way before anybody in Star Wars tried to shove it down our throats. This is not a political rant. It's just more of showing the support for this video um, or this, um, this series has really shown that we've wanted it forever. 
We've been good with it forever. We've wanted strong, powerful female leads for years before anybody decided to retool Star Wars or Captain Marvel. We've always been down for it. So all of us in the basement, the, the stereotype that so many of us, uh, they put us in, it doesn't matter. We've always wanted it and we've always been good with it. And that's just a testament to the lack of prejudice that we have that a lot of us that are into this kind of this kind of animation and this kind of storytelling sci-fi adventures have always been okay with it have always wanted it accepted it and and needed it also the creature designs in this first segment along with all the others is unprecedented it's so detailed their movement the details in their skin, the blood, the sweat is unreal. Not to mention something that Hollywood could really learn from this entire animated series. I want you to think about Transformers, those the films, and that spinny, crazy action that you can't even see. That's been done since Born Identity and all this random spinning of the camera. The action in this is so deliberate, you really never lose sight of the subjects in the fighting. You feel like you're a part of it. The simplicity of the Transformers cartoons versus the movies with all these moving parts where you have no idea what the hell's going on. This is why Pacific Rim was so refreshing when it first came out. It was deliberate. You could keep track of the subjects on screen. That's why people love John Wick keeping everything in frame and making it deliberate. And you can feel it versus the spinning of the camera. I don't know what the hell is going on. There's too many moving parts. They're real. They're tangible. They look practical. That is what made me feel so much in not just this first episode, but in all of them. The way the camera in every segment is on the subject, behind it, around it, is something Hollywood just cannot grasp. The battle scenes in Battle Alita versus Battle Angel the, Angel, the animated series, are not even close. They're not even close. I don't know. I, battle Angel Alita was fine, but comparing the anime to the film, the scenes were so much more thought out and better executed in the anime. And this is what I'm seeing in this subject, in this film here, in this series here. And that's why I wanted to go here and talk about other kinds of animation. To me, this is more important because if we can get some storytelling done like this, perhaps those third party or big studios will do a Kingdom Come this way instead of live action with Ben Affleck and all kinds of actors that don't want to do these films. Again, the detail in the characters. Think in comparison to this, to Doomsday and Battle Batman vs. Superman. The lack of detail in those characters. How generic the bad guys were in Suicide Squad. This kind of detail. The difference in characters. But how simplistic they are. But how detailed they are at the same time. Now I know I'm spending a ton of time on this one episode. And if you're new to the channel. You're probably thinking what the hell is he talking about. But the detail just in this scene. The ligaments attached to this knife arm on this other warrior. That's more detail than I see in any film or most anything. And this is in a 10 minute, 15 minute segment. There's more emotion and more movement and more feeling in this, this short than I have felt in feature films and even most shows. It felt like this whole thing was three minutes long. And that is my only complaint is I want to know where this story goes, not to mention the stories of all the other segments. The point of the video is to talk about conveying all that emotion, all the storytelling, all the visual with the shininess new technology. Some of these are crystal clear, other ones are muddy and hand drawn, some are cell shaded, some have that spider verse look to it, but they're all able to convey something most films can't, especially live action. This episode, Suits, is able to capture that Spider-Verse without all the grid lines, comic look to it. But it has that same motion, even though, or same storytelling. Even though the motion is supposed, it's like stuttered on purpose, it does make you feel. It's funny, it's light, it's colorful, completely different than the first episode, 
they're all super different. But the ability to tell that story, make you care about the characters in 10 minutes when I can't even remember the names or characters in long films. And compare new films. I'm thinking Alien vs. Prometheus. One I care about, one I could care less about in terms of its character development. Caring about the Nostromo versus caring about the new ship. It looks like it's made in Ikea versus the gritty style. It just It's all about the feeling. Caring about characters is something I haven't been able to do in films in a long time. Only shows in the last few years have actually made me really care about the characters. This got me feeling that way. I mean, really, really stuck with me to where I had to go back and watch them again and again. Even this episode, Sucker of Souls, with its simple animation, just the movement and the way the detail is, the characters have such weight. So this reminds me of that Kill Bill animation, where the animation is simple, but the movement is complex. And the weight, the, the way the character is built, and the turning to the side, and it's, it's so simple. You can see the pencil lines on it. And it's still amazing. So lack of detail, less is more. Reminds me of the Frank Miller um, series back in the day. Dame to Kill for Sin City. Not the movies, but the comics. Less is more. Less detail, more detail, more storytelling. Simply amazing. Shape-shifting, one of my favorites in the entire series. I won't show you anything from it because I don't want to give it away. But again, capturing so much. Now in terms of visual quality, yes, it's got a grain to it. It's on purpose, everyone. We're not looking for crystal clear. They're all different. But again, making me care about these characters in 10 to 15 minutes is, what's, is what this is all about. Is making me feel without any actors. I'm not looking at Brad Pitt. I'm not looking at some well-known actor, Woody Harrelson, who's in freaking everything. I'm looking at somebody drew this. And animated it. And I don't care who the voice actor is. But in turn it makes me care more about the subject matter. Than what bored actor or actress doesn't want to do a part. You know, you know, it's like. You know the director and the animators are dedicated to it. Or they wouldn't be doing it. It's ironic that David Fincher is part of this. Considering his sci-fi beginnings in Aliens 3. Being his first movie and being pushed out of that film. To come back and do something like this is, is extraordinary. And to really care about it. You can tell they care about it. You're not doing this if you don't care about it. If I'm an actor, you can put me in something I could care less about. Let me go back to freaking Ben Kenobi. You know? Hated doing that role. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> he hated doing that role. Uh, actors now. You know, Alec Guinness hated doing that role. And actors that we have now, we, a lot was made of Captain Mar Marvel, Brie, L Brie Larson not wanting to do that role. I like Captain Marvel. It wasn't terrible. What I'm saying is that you're not worried about having Harrison Ford back. Who cares what the actor thinks? Just draw another one, put a voice actor behind them. If that voice actor doesn't want to come back, have somebody else do it. And it's amazing. It's about the work. It's about the, the passion. It's not about the finances or the actors or the egos. And there are a few here that are pure CGI that are very similar to the first scene in Animatrix, which was that Matrix Extra, which I recommend you all try to seek out on either YouTube or try to order it. It was a bonus disc on the HD DVD, and I think it was standalone in the Metri Matrix Blu-ray series. Animatrix was unreal. There was a couple really good ones, and there was a few amazing ones. The CGI back then was still very, uh, it was still a little bit lifeless in terms of the uncanny valley. The teeth are a little bit too detailed. The eyes are still a little dead. But this is very good. The action in this, again, the, the flight scenes in these episodes, the, the emotion they're able to show. To me, again, I saw more action in each one of these episodes that I really appreciated than I did falling asleep in the pre two previous movies that I mentioned. And I did fall asleep in both of them for a few seconds. But again, to capture that, it really is the perfect balance between gaming and books, like I said before. The, the only limits in 
animation is imagination. You've heard that before, and I feel like it's fully realized in this entire series. I feel like it's not held back by um, the animation of, say, Godzilla, where you're trying to stay with an idea of this epic monster and you're making little changes. Um, the Castlevania on Netflix was pretty good. But this stuff, these shorts, I think beat both of those easily and again can capture your imagination on any given story for just a short period of time. You get to know these characters, you get a feeling for them and I mean I wish they were, they were longer but they're perfect the way they are. Witness remind me most of the aforementioned classic heavy metal. And again, in the grunge look, in the movement, and it looks like a watercolor painting. And it's rushed, and it's nervous, and it's hazy. And like heavy metal, it does have that, that you know, erotic nudity. I don't know if I should watch this aspect of it, but it just does serve the story. It's not just excessive, it's for the story. But it just, it just has that, that gritty feel. Look at the detail in this shot. The camera angles, like I said earlier, with Born Identity and that spinning around was disorienting, disorienting, disorientating in a different way. Dizzying and you couldn't pay attention. The movement in this is disorientating in a different way where you feel like you're there. When you're in this part of it, you feel like you're being dragged into this scene. You feel like you're the one that's high or drunk or lost. Again, it blurs in, it blurs out, it gets out of focus, it comes in. It looks like a watercolor painting, but it's so detailed. I mean, it just, it really does pull you in. And the movement is very similar to Heavy Metal before it, and a lot of other animated films that just aren't mainstream. But I wish they were. Um, maybe not so they don't get ruined, but hopefully this Netflix series really brings this kind of storytelling to light. What you get in Blade Runner, you get in 15 minutes. Now, my least favorite was Ice Age, which did have real actors in it. There is Topher Grace of Spider-Man 3 fame, <laughs> or that 70s show fame. It just kind of shows you how sensitive I am to putting these type of actors in something like this. Um, if anything, I'm sure it was made as a contrast to show you crappy real actors in comparison to excellent animation, but to me this is the weakest episode just simply because of their presence. It was funny and everything, but kind of the problem with Hollywood is adding characters or actors like this that I already have a feeling about from other things or their personal life on in publicity. I don't I like about animation. I don't care what their love life is. I don't care what their money is or what their political thoughts are or what their beliefs are. You put actors in it, especially cornballs like this, and you know, it messes it up for me. But this is probably the only one I found weak, simply because this dude was in it. So I'm clearly in love with the entire series. I just spent 18 plus minutes talking about it. Like I said, it's more about the story that animation can deliver and how much every one of those episodes impressed me. We'll do more videos on it in the future, um, episode by episode, or a full review on it. My review is go buy it, or I'm sorry, go buy it, go see it. If there's one thing I will say, other than them being too short, is I really wish there was a 4K Blu-ray of it, just because compression can wreak havoc, and you can't tell if it's the compression or the art style. I wish it was a little bit cleaner, um, just due to the fact that it's streaming, and that's where streaming does rear its ugly head. Now, before I get out of here, I want to recommend two from me, um, and I want you guys in the comments, those of you that, who watch this, to recommend to others what you recommend. And this is the only way we're gonna get this kind of stuff noticed. To me, the biggest recommendation is Heavy Metal, which came out many, many years ago. When I was a kid, I actually saw it on WHT, which was before HBO. That's how far back we go in the late 70s. That was cable that was only on at night. Heavy Metal, awesome soundtrack, set up very similarly to this anthology that we were just watching on Netflix. It's except it has a overreaching story that covers all the episodes. The animation still stands up to this day. And those of you that are younger, when you watch this, you're gonna see certain um, foreshadowing or certain movies that were influenced by heavy metal. The very first episode is straight Fifth Element 
all the way. It's been acknowledged. It's here. Again, the animation is primitive, but think about when it was done. It was also very graphic, and just like um, the anthology we were just talking about, the robots, and this is beyond its years and its detail, and the art style is different every single episode. And like the other episodes, some are a little bit cheery, some are funny, some end abruptly and make you feel empty. They don't have happy endings, but they are excellent. Heavy metal, amazing. And like Love, Death, and Robots, the stories are so varied and yet just fit somehow. And especially in this one, they all fit together. Um, again, some nudity if those of you that are, <laughs> that are sensitive to it, I highly doubt it. A lot of action, very good, but those of you that are younger that have never seen it, keep in mind how old it is and just still how timeless it is. And you can really still appreciate the, um, the animation and again the storytelling as well as the soundtrack was excellent for the time as well. And I really love the soundtrack and love Death and Robots as well. Very um, Blade Runner 2049. And very much like Love, Death, and Robots, it leaves you wanting more about these characters in this universe. Not to mention one of the most badass female characters ever, going back to the 70s, I might add. So do me a favor and check out Heavy Metal. You can find it everywhere and anywhere. Um, it's definitely worth the look if you enjoyed Love, Death, and Robots. The second is the amazing but completely overlooked Animatrix. I'm sorry I don't have a better picture of it to show up here. But some of the shorts in Animatrix, especially the prequel to The Matrix and how the humans were taken over by robots, has a better eye robot feel to how robots were slaves to us and how they revolted. To me, is the movie that should have been made, even if it's done animated, blows away the other Matrix films or any other film like it. Um, it actually is more of what I would say a great Terminator story about how the androids have become self-aware. And again, in an animated short, capturing the emotion that films just can't. The second Renaissance shows how we lose the battle and how they learn to create the Matrix based on our emotions. And in this shot right here, they're showing how to make somebody laugh, make them cry in order to enslave us as a battery. But unlike other, pre other prequels that add all kinds of other crap that doesn't need to be there, other characters that don't need to be there, animation is allowed to do it in a more direct way. Um, with the characters we enjoy, without the actors we can't stand, that don't want to be there. Again, just the passion of the artist, the director, and that's where the passion is. The director wants to do it, the artists want to draw it, the storytellers want to tell these stories. And that's where I think in animation it comes through so much better than it does in live action films with a bored actor or a director that doesn't feel like it, like a Michael, uh, you know... Michael Moore in the, um, in the Transformers. You know, you tell me he really loved Transformers. I am a Transformers fanatic from Generation 1, and I hate those movies. All right, hate's a strong word. I don't like using the word hate on the channel. Let's just say very, very, very much dislike those films. Find them unwatchable. Anyway, check out Animatrix. I think you guys will love it. Again, if you love the love, death, and robots, if you love that, you will absolutely love Animatrix, and you will love heavy metal. Um, Animatrix, again, to me, is a great piece of what the Matrix storyline, it just shows that extra part of it that adds more depth to the actual Matrix. It's a prequel that enriches it in every single way and had so many of us that watched the Matrix when it first came out thinking the next movies were going to be the best movies in history. Obviously, they were not, but Animatrix is phenomenal. The um, animation style is very similar to that of the anthology where some of it is very simplistic but very detailed the motion the movement all precise storytelling top-notch gorgeous it's gonna be hard to find a good copy of it the copies on YouTube are not very good try and track it down on Amazon if you can I gave my copies away unfortunately trying to pass this story around years ago in a matrix check this one out as well 
I'm so very sorry for the long-winded vid. Obviously, I'm very passionate about this subject, especially with animation and animation through the years. I recommend those two films, Animatrix and Heavy Metal, if you've enjoyed the Netflix film. Um, quickly, for a quick comparison, what I wanted to compare was the Transformers, the movie, which I saw at about 12 years old in the movie theaters. One of my first true loves in animation and in characters was the mighty Megatron. Such heroic nonsense. Starscream. Where the focus was on the robots, was on the Cybertronians, on the Decepticons, the Autobots, on their characters. The films are about Shia LaBeouf, his mom getting high on brownies, and some hot chick. And a lot of really good actors acting like fools. Watch Transformers the movie. At least watch the first battle. Um, between the generation before they introduce the others. The rest of it is fine. But if you want to see what Devastator really looks like, not in the second terrible film, if you want to see way it's done correctly and how these characters have emotion and how you lose beloved characters in the first three minutes of the film, this scene right here still, sells, still sends chills up my spine. Animation has that kind of power. Not some ridiculous corny actor that we've seen in a million other things cracking jokes or just some hot girl to make people watch it. But the characters that you know and love for years or you've only known for 10 minutes that you care about that are suddenly gone. The action in this hand-drawn sequence blows away any of the movies put together all compared. The feeling in this scene, the feeling in the next scene, and the scene after that is just something that I'll remember forever. And it's not just nostalgia. I still get it seeing it now. And this series on Netflix has showed me that it's not just nostalgia. That this kind of art and this kind of passion can invoke all kinds of emotion that film cannot. So this is a long video about animation. Sci-fi adventure and the creativity behind it. And how I feel like... Love, Death, and Robots, if it gets noticed and it gets the praise that I hope it does, that hopefully it becomes a more viable way to tell a story. Hopefully, some of our favorite comics don't have to be big, huge, tentpole productions with actors that don't want to resign or don't feel like doing it. Hopefully it can be just about the characters and for something like Transformers to be about the actual robots and not be about the human characters or the human condition um, is not giving actors a lot of screen time who cares that's what this video is about i apologize it was so long um please let me know what you think of love death and robots and what you think about the other ones i recommended being animatrix heavy metal and transformers the movie though it has nothing to do with the others the others are in the style of love death and robots but i appreciate your comments those of you that share this passion in animation and in sci-fi and adventure thank you so much for hanging through the video again i'm sorry it was so long no need to point out in the comments how long it was uh it's just all about passion i don't care if two people watch it but for those of you that do watch it that are part of the channel that love this kind of thing thank you so much for the comments and for uh, being passionate about the same things that we're all passionate about. And I hopefully that Love, Death, and Robots gets the attention it needs and deserves. And we can have a second season and more like it. Thank you as always, guys. This is Brian from Whisper Status 74. Take care.